One common application of trees is to implement a decision tree. A decision tree is a common technique used in artificial intelligence and other applications where each node represents a choice that you can make and then each answer has its own branch to either other choices or some outcome. So for example, you could have a decision tree if you go to a mechanic and they can have a decision tree that says, okay, what's wrong with your car? Then if you say, well, it's making a noise when I accelerate, then there's additional questions that would be asked based on that. But if you go in and say, well, there's a clanking noise when I break, then that would set another set of questions that may for the most part be unrelated to the questions you would get if you had the first problem. So decision trees can be used in many different places. In fact, there's also algorithms to generate a decision tree, but we'll focus on the example in the book, which is this decision tree here. So this decision tree tries to diagnose a patient who's experiencing pain. And hopefully you know not to actually use this yourself. But the way this will work is we ask the question that's at the root. Did the pain occur after a blow or jolt? So let's say no. Do we have a fever? Let's say yes. Do we have a sore throat or runny nose? Let's say yes to that. So we may have a respiratory infection. And then if this was being used in a medical context, then there would be some action that would follow that diagnosis. Or if the pain did occur after a blow or jolt, I would answer yes here. And then do I have difficulty controlling arms and legs? If I say yes, then that's an emergency. I may have a damaged spinal cord. And you'll notice that in this case, once, once we have this answer, then we have a conclusion. Whereas in the other cases, it takes at least three different answers to reach a conclusion. So there's no set level for every subtree here, but you can almost think of each subtree as diagnosing a problem given the answers that were already given. And it turns out with a binary tree, this is a pretty straightforward thing to implement. So if we take a look at the code, and you can see that the back pain analyzer class is incredibly easy to implement because it uses the right object, which is a back pain expert. So we instantiate that object and then we call the diagnose, ob the diagnose method. Now I would probably say in this case, since we don't seem to be using this object other than just to call this method, I would probably tend to make this a static method, but the book chose to add it to this object. So we'll go with that. I've changed up how the book did it. In this case, I built the tree based on the same type of pattern we did with the tree building example. The book actually goes to a file, I believe, reads from the file and, and puts things in. But I think that makes it hard to follow what's going on because it just sucks everything up from the file. So in this case, we're being a little more explicit. And you'll notice we have six different questions and then we have seven different possible outcomes. The questions start with a Q, the outcomes start with an E. And then I'm gonna put each of those in a linked binary tree, but I'm gonna build that tree from the bottom up. So here you can see, let's see, which of these will be a good one to use here. Let's use Q6. So here, when we, when we build node six, that's question six. Do you have pain or numbness in one arm or leg? And its children are N12 and N13, which we just created with the choice of you may have a muscle sprain or strain, a muscle or nerve injury. So each time we're, we're building lists with these leaves, which are the explanations. And then we're building another tree with the questions with the trees we made for the nodes. Even though it's just a leaf, it's still a binary tree. And so that's why we're building a binary tree with each of these in it. And then in some cases, if it's a question, the two subtrees are answers or as can be the case here for no two to no three, notice that its children aren't the responses. They're actually the previous nodes we built with additional questions. So once we do all this, we should have a tree that looks like this without the yes or no. And we'll actually build that yes or no logic into our code. Now we've built the tree to diagnose. What we do is we say, okay, so you're having back pain. And then while the size of the tree is greater than one, meaning we're not at a leaf, we're going to get the, the current root element and print that. That's the question to pose to the user. And then we're going to ask that question. Remember, we phrased each of those as a question. If they say no, we go to the left. Otherwise, we go to the right. We keep doing that while the size is greater than one. Once it is one, we've reached a leaf. And so 
we print what the evaluation is at that leaf. We start off here. Did the pain occur after a blower jolt? Yes. So then we go here. The size of this subtree is greater than one. So we ask the question, do you have difficulty controlling arms or legs? Let's say no. So then we go here. Now that we're here, the size of this subtree is three grafts greater than one. So do we have pain or numbness in one arm or leg? Yes. Here we have a size of one, so we skip the loop, and this is what we will print out as the diagnosis. So that's an example of a decision tree in Java.